All right, everyone. Good morning and welcome. Uh, wanted to come on here and talk about uh, breaking news. And when we talk about breaking news, we are talking about the good news, of course. And today, the good news has been broken. And what do we what do we mean by broken news? Uh, the little play on words, I admit. Um, but to tell the story, to tell the end-to-end, -end, um, religion today has broke the news. It has broken the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, when we go back and we look, in the beginning, When we're to look at this story, we're talking about a creation. And, and let me just let me just back up just a second here. So um, many of you know where I came from uh, in religion, and many of you know where I had you know went. And let me just say to those who don't or are contemplating religion or have been in it you have to at some point step back you have to at some point realize the story has been broken the gospel of the good news has been broken and if you have read uh the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you have understood them, you've read them with fervency and open heart to God, and not through filters of man's religion, man's rules, man's, uh, they call a standard, um, and you, you, will, you will begin to see a different, different story, a different level of Jesus. You will begin to see in Matthew 23 the things that Jesus railed against the Pharisees and the scribes. You will begin to see those things come to light in your own churches. Um, and these things shouldn't be happening. But they have always been happening because the news has been broken. Uh, breaking news breaking the good news of the gospel of peace. And I begin today in man's dilemma in Genesis where we found Adam and Eve. We uh, I believe the creation. And, and as I was alluding to a minute ago, and let me get back to that. If you are not into religion, If you have not subscribed and you have seen the fakeness of man, the fall of man, the, the um, hypocrisy, if you will, um, then you must wonder and you have wondered or you wouldn't be thinking about it or have judged so um, that one day there was a creation. Uh, there was a time when man came into existence. You must have thought, what is my purpose? What does this all mean? Is it simply we, we are born and we live out some short lives, others long lives, most 60s to 70s? Um, and so when you look at those things, you wonder why was I put on earth? Why was I placed here? Why? Um, what is the meaning of life? Um, is it just about me? Is it about others? Um, and when you are engaged or, or made known of the story, and I say story loosely, um, of God and the creation of man and the Garden of Eden, what God meant for man, um, I say man as in mankind, man, um, human, um, 
So when you look at that, you see that God created a, a family. He created Adam. And I'm not going to go into the stories, but I'm going to move forward. Um, and, and God placed them in a garden. And God, uh, there it was, from what we read, it's, it was pretty good life. And uh, one thing that God said not to do, they did. And they, the, the woman said, I was beguiled by the serpent. And each had their own special judgment, which follows us today in the natural. And so, but there was a promise made, a promise made that there would be a Messiah uh, that would come, that his heel, she would be born of a woman, and his heel would bruise the head of that serpent. And so as the story goes, as the, um, the, the mantra of, of, of knowing and, and believing what had happened, it places man in an awkward place. It puts man in a place that he is at a disadvantage for life itself. So when you look at that life, we are already, everything is against us for eternal life. We understand and most believe that there is a time and space probably not even time after we dissolve on this earth but the story again here begins the story now man was created in the image of god man was moved and there was a promise made that one day there would be a messiah that would rebalance what god intended would rebalance the the area that God had planned for man and, and, and make a way back to the Creator where in the cool of the day that He could just speak out to you that He could put those things, those thoughts and those, those uh, words in your heart. And so as we move forward, we progress. We, we've had the Old Testament for years and when we look at that, uh, it was how God dealt. We, we call some of this dispensations or ways God had dealt with man. And, and the story goes on and, and, it, and it continually hints and, and, and predicts, uh, prophesies of that Messiah that is coming one day that will rebalance, will set things back to where man has a, a common uh, communion with God again. Um, as it was meant to be and as we go forward man God had made provisions for man to push sins back it would go through man at this time born of a woman and a man but this 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 Messiah that was spoken of this good news that would come was about a Jesus a Jesus Christ a sacrifice a God manifest in the flesh and and as it alludes to throughout the stories of the old testament you will see that many times there was angels uh so-called um jacob wrestled with an angel and provided him a new identity so there's hints of this humanity one day recon reconciling back to god and the story goes my friend the story breaking news breaking the the the, the good news and, and, and as we do a play on those words, we're breaking the good news and those things when, when those things were meant to come to pass. And finally, when Jesus, born of a woman, the seed of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, and when you look at the miracles to confirm that this was He, and even he said when he went into the temple, the synagogue, to, to stand up and, and speak the words of the prophecy of Isaiah. Uh, this day have this scripture been fulfilled in your ears. He was acknowledging, he was letting them know, proclaiming that he was he, a man who should come. And he was there. And when I tell you to read the Gospels, when you look at the Gospels, you see the life of Jesus, the miracles, the, the, the disciples that he, he chosen uh, to propagate, to, to not only to propagate, and, and let, me, let me back up a second. The most important reason for the pick of 12 apostles, which is God's number, God chose 12. Um, but the reason they were picked were a witness, a natural witness 
for that day of judgment. And these men were picked to see who this Jesus was, that he became God to them. And when he became God to them, he showed them the miracles. He showed them uh, of, of restoring life with Lazarus. He walked on the water. He also calmed the seas and the winds. And, and, and he, he, he restored limbs. He restored leprosy or he, take, he took leprosy away. So as you look at those things, he was there. God manifest in the flesh. And when you when you see those things, I'm sorry, a little bit, there's uh, just some things going on around, walking, people walking on the street, and I'm outside here. But when you look at those things, this is the story. This is the good news that he came, the Messiah was finally here. And he did all these things to prove that he was. And he even told the scribes and the Pharisees, the religion of that day, that look, if you don't want to believe me because who I am, believe me for the very work's sake. Where else, who else has ever done what I'm doing of bringing people back to life? I am restoring the dumb, the, 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 the blind, the, the halt, the maimed. I am showing you I have power over the winds and the seas. I can calm the storms. Amen. I can, I can resurrect the dead from three days. And I can do all these things. Believe me for the very work's sake, he said. So when you look at those things today, this is the story. This is the story. He said, I have come to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. To set the captives free. And, and Jesus uh, gave the disciples, the, the Peter himself, he, he even exposed that Peter would fail three times. And even though he was in love with Jesus, that he in his flesh, he without the Spirit, without the Holy Ghost, could not serve God, could not keep his promise to God. So when you look at those things and you, you look again, that story is about us coming back to God in through Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed would remove our sins would restore us back to a reconciliation of communion with God himself and when you look at that Jesus is the promise Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and no man can come to the Father but through me and when you look at those things my friend you you no man, no preacher, no no priest, none of these things have been ever transferred back to man. This is a new and living way, he said. This is the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Again, no man can come to God but through me. And when you look at those things, when you look at that story, this is the news. It's the good news that we no longer have to be under man. We no longer have to, to submit to man. We no longer have to submit to a natural authority. But through Christ, we ha now have access and privilege to and through God. Amen. So, Jesus, the story is Jesus. The good news is that he came to set us free. But we, in our religion today, have broken the news. We have broken the news from what it was supposed to be to what it now is. And we are not captive. We only allow ourselves to be captive by man and through man. We have gone back, like he said, the vomit. When the dog vomits, he goes back and eats the vomit. Now, how grotesque is that? That's what you've done. If you have known and, 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 and experienced the liberty of Jesus Christ through his spirit, through the Holy Ghost, you now have sat under a man. You have went back from your freedom. You see, Jesus said he was the middle wall partition. He was what? He, he was the way to get back to God. Priesthood, the, the, the blood of goats and bullocks, 
could never take away sin but by the blood of Jesus Christ that one mediator and that middle wall partition that was holding us back and, and man could never restore us to God it took God himself manifest in the flesh and, and, and when you look at that he provided that perfect sacrifice he moved on our behalf while we were yet sinners he loved us amen it was Jesus and Jesus constantly told the disciples the way that they would be able to find God reconciliation again and that was through his spirit that was through the Holy Ghost he said I am with you but I will be in you and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord and one mind and they they assembled there because this was a event for Jews the day of Pentecost and that's why he moved them there not that we should be doing that today that was still under the law and many many religions will preach that we are still under the law they won't name it like that but in word and in deed they are putting you back under the law you are free he whom the son of man has set free that is Jesus is free indeed but if you have been freed and you go back under what they call a pastorship and you join a, a religious organization and you follow these these rules that Jesus railed against time after time even his own disciples were attacked by the religion of that day and Jesus defended them when you're with Jesus there is no law you have perfect peace and your law is your desire through the Holy Ghost to serve God himself. You are not under man. You are not subject to man. You don't have to hold your mouth a certain way to get on a platform to sing for Jesus. I'm telling you, my friend, you've got to understand this. You've got to see it for what it is. This is religion. The story has been broken. The good news has been broken by the religious of our day those organizations those who think that they have the, the the call on god's word they think that they have the authority amen to say whether you're saved and i'm saved they are they have broken the good news they it not in a good way they have broken what jesus meant for us to have individually amen and I tell you today, that day is going to come. And Jesus will, will remind those that have fallen away, that have left back to man, that he is called and, and, and have put themselves back under slavery and submission to man and not to God. Amen. I want you to know today that story still exists. That good news is still here. But it is broken by religion. It is broken by false deceivers. And, and Jesus said when, when, when the disciples said, Lord, let us know when the last days, what should we look for? And he said, take heed that no man deceive you. And, and, and I just want you to know, he said, well, it's, it's in the Bible. Well, understand that if anything moves off, of those who I witnessed Jesus and his works and his teaching and that would be the 12 disciples if anyone moves outside of that if anyone comes back in and brings back the things that Jesus said was wrong amen an abomination and those things that we should not be doing such as the the hierarchy or thing and the institution and 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 you know, we, we, we look at these things, and I've pointed out, and please watch Jesus Name Ministries videos. I, I've talked about these things. But today, I want to talk about that story. If that story has been broken, if that good news has been broken, and I'm not talking in a good way, it has been broken because you should be set at liberty. You should not be in turmoil. You should not be thinking about a position in church. You should not be, be under some man that's, that's, that's pushing you with heavy weights like Jesus said the, the Pharisees do. You should not be involved in all that. Amen. I'm not saying you shouldn't get together with people. And, and, and if they wanted to have a real and, 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 and true meeting, why didn't they just call it that? 
It's a club. You pay to be in a club. It's what it is today. If they just be honest, but they're not honest even with that. Because this is about liberty. This is about freedom. This is about having a one-to-one -one relationship with God himself. That's why Jesus came. That is the story. The story is breaking news. It's good news because you no longer have to follow man. You no longer have to subject yourself under man and under the inadequate because man cannot save you. Man will never be able to save you. God has, has said that when I leave, I will send the comforter, the promise. That is the promise. And he said, even in Hebrews, that they would not. They would not accept it. And, and, and even though you may have received it, if you've placed yourself back on your man in a religion, a thing called religion today, in an organization, under, under pastors and, and, and elders as they call themselves, I'm telling you, you have, you have went back to the vomit like the dog. You're, you're, you're back second grade. You, you, you had a first class seat to heaven and you have chosen to give that up and go back to the back of the plane, my friend. And, and, and I don't know how God's going to judge that. I'm not telling you that you're going to go to hell for it. I'm telling you, be, I, w I can say that if you're putting that pastor above God and, and, and you're, you're allowing them to, to lead you and not the Holy Ghost, then, then you are frustrating the grace of the Holy Ghost. And I truly believe that by the word of God. And today, be free. Lose yourself in the Lord. Amen. Give God the glory. Don't allow the creature to, to, to be glorified more than the creator. And that's what you do when you, when you have these so-called pastors and these priests that you place them above God. And, and there are preachers and evangelists and pastors that once I thought was some of the greatest, uh, closest to God. That, that now preach, and I heard it with my own ears, I watched a video myself that will tell you that if, if God don't tell that pastor and that pastor don't tell you, then, then it's not of God. And I'll tell you what, that's a lie from hell. And these people have erred. They, they have left the grace of God. They have forgotten the good news. They have broken the story, the good news of Jesus, and went astray. And I'll tell you, if you don't judge the everything in that Bible, including the book of Acts, of, of, of their, what is going on and the letters to the churches, as we call it, if you don't judge everything, if you do not judge it by the Gospels, which is the same thing that they claim, the writers claim, to be moving off of or using for their words that we do not depart from Jesus and so if it does not line up if, if Jesus said there'll be no hires and, and, and lowers in my kingdom and, and he was not condoning it when he said that the, 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 the greater will be as the the, the the slave or the or the lesser that he said that if you are to choose that route then let me let me explain to you my kingdom it's flip-flopped. If you were to go down that road, then the, the master would be the servant. As I have come as your master, and I have become your servant to wash your feet. Amen. And, and so when you look at those things, and, and you look at the, the, they call it corporate worship. They call it corporate prayer. But Jesus never talked about corporate worship. Jesus never talked about corporate prayer. Jesus said, if you're going to pray, don't pray as the, the Pharisees and the scribes. They go out into the cities, and when they fast, they, they put on the long faces, and oh, woe is me, and I've been fasting, and, and they're taking all the glory. And, and Jesus said, when you pray, enter into your closet. Well, that's a far cry from what's being taught today in the churches. If you will just go through those Gospels, you will just read and, and, and know what Jesus wants. And if you would just pray and seek the Holy Ghost and be in love with Jesus, you will begin to see 
that these things are erring from Jesus. It doesn't matter what Paul says. If it's contrary to what Jesus taught, it's wrong. It, 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 is, it is there. You say, well, it's in, it's in the Bible. Of course it's in the Bible. But not everything in the Bible is for our instruction to do. It is able to, to let us see what has happened. As the Old Testament, we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. We're under the Holy Ghost. He is who we uh, follow through Jesus Christ. Amen. And he said, He shall bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have commanded and said it to you. That is who we follow. Jesus never said a man to follow. Jesus never said anything about some person or some office to follow. And that, my friend, is, is where it's at. Jesus said, but the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Promiser, and, and, and when he told the disciples, I'm here to teach you. I'm here to tell you. I'm here for you to follow. And he said, but I will be gone and I will send the comforter, the promise I will send. He is who you will, it, when he comes, he will lead and guide you into all truth. The only thing, the only uh authority that Jesus left was to the Holy Ghost. It was not to man. He didn't say an office. He didn't say a, a pastor, a priest. He didn't say any kind of religious organization. No, he did not. And you will not find that in the Bible. You will not find that. You will see that in the book of Acts that they instituted those things. And, and, and but you also see in the book of Acts 15 where many things were wrong. And I'm not putting a damp on anything. But you must not break from the story of the gospel of good news. And if you're breaking that gospel, if you're breaking that news, and I'm talking about breaking from what Jesus told us and promised us, and you go back to man, then you have broken the good news. You have broken what the story was supposed to be. And so I hope that by bringing it out this way and not just scripture after scripture and, and, and all these things, because that's what they do. They, they, so when, when, you, when you begin to see, you say, hey, you know, wait a minute, this, this whole thing wasn't supposed to go like this. It doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. Why, why am I being tore up? Why am I, when I think of church or when I think of, oh, we're going we're gonna to worship, why, why am I having all these problems? Why is all this, this, these burdens feel like they're, they're weighing me down? And, and, and why is this rule, this rule, this rule? Serve God. Be holy. Let God determine. He said if your conscience condemns you, God is greater than your conscience. So listen to God. Don't listen to some some list of standards they call uh, that 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 man has come to, to tell you and, and put you under burden again. So when you look at that, he said, "In whom the Son of Man is set free is free indeed." And and you you got you got scriptures that that point to things that 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 back a lot of this up, even by those that say contrary things to what Jesus taught. And so you have to navigate this. You have to see the Bible is interwoven and, 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 and only those that God calls. You're not going to make it by the letter because he said the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life. That in itself should tell you that you must follow the spirit because if you don't follow the spirit you're under the law. And no one will survive under the law on your own works. But it has to be the grace of Jesus, that spirit that will lead and guide you into all truth. And, and, and let not man dictate to you how to serve God. God is at the mention of his name to every one of us. And if you find yourself 
that closet of prayer. If you find yourself that that intention and that heart poured out to God, he will be found. And I just want to thank you for watching today. I appreciate everything um, that, that y'all uh, listen to. Um, I'm not doing this for any anything other than saving my own soul and, and, and to share what I have found in Jesus and, and the perfect peace that only he gives, not some man. Amen. All right. Love you guys. And thanks again for watching.